first comic you fell in love with? I remember we were always around, you know. Mm -hmm. my, my first instinct, which is to go chronologically, which would have probably been like Mad Magazine. And the thing I loved about Mad was that its reread value was infinite, nearly infinite, uh, by which I mean you could reread it like five times. Because uh, <laughs> there was so much, I, I always remember like it was never done until I had gone through and found all of the Sergio drawings. Right. But right. I would just spend hours going through and finding all the gags, you know, that sort of Will Elder tradition of piling in little background jokes. Um, so, like, I remember just reading issues of Mad until the staples fell out, you know, and just, just going through it. And being way too young to get most of the jokes, but still, yeah. that, so I remember that. The first comic I fell in love with was Superman Speeding Bullets by J.M. DeMatteis and Eduardo Barreto, which was a DC Elseworlds prestige one-shot uh, in 1993, wherein Superman, instead of crash landing in Kansas, crash landed on a country road outside of Gotham and got picked up by the Waynes, and then lived out Batman's childhood and formative trauma to become... Batman, but with Superman's powers. So he also had a little bit of that, like, uh, super-powered alien detachment from humanity built into the character. Uh, it really just amped up the darkness and isolation of the Batman mythos to another level. Uh, I, there was a bad guy. He was uh, the Joker and Lex Luthor um, kind of mixed together. That was less interesting. But what really got me as a 13-year-old was, A, the possibility that there were other versions of Superman and Batman. I had no idea. I didn't know Elseworlds existed. I didn't even know what it was. I didn't understand parallel universes or alternate continuities. And this was my first introduction to the vast potential of letting people take existing characters and take them down a completely different path without it having to have an effect on all that had gone before. It could just be its own little story, a little a little what if or else world. Um, I also love the fact that the only thing that could save this hu superhuman vigilante was the love of a good woman who saw the nobility inside him. Uh, somehow, as a 13-year-old boy, uh, that was immensely reassuring. Now, I'm going to say the, 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 the one that made me a lifer was Sandman. Okay. Anything in... A specific issue that really hit you in a certain way, no. or the series in general? No, it was the the series in general. I I don't think it's interesting when I think of that story. It is so rich and so real in my head. I can't tell you who drew which parts of the story. Hmm. Um, it it is it is a hole um, in my head. Uh, it, 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 yeah, it, I think I absorbed that book in a different way than any other media, really, I had ever taken in. Um, and I binged, bi I binge consumed it, you mm -hmm. know. Because um, uh, I didn't read it and go like, this is so amazing, I must do this. You know, I read it and was just so taken with the story and the mythology and this this... this feeling that uh, that that all of this had pre-existed and somehow mm -hmm. Gaiman had just written it down mm -hmm. you know um, uh, I don't think I, I, I the next logical step for me was I could do that you know like it, it was n nothing like that I did want to contribute to it in some way and so like later in like a few years later I um, I curated a mail art project where we all did um, art based on The Endless. My name is Colleen Frakes from TragicRelief.com. And the first comic I fell in love with, I was sick with chicken pox in the second grade. And a friend of my mom's bought me a copy of Brennan Snoopy number one. And I didn't have cable, so I had no idea what the characters were. But I must have read that comic a hundred times while I was sick and couldn't go off the road. <laughs> and what was it about the comic that made you respond to it? Just that it was a comic book where I hadn't really experienced that before. We lived in a very isolated community. I didn't even get a newspaper, so I hadn't had any exposure. Is there Hi, I'm Donna. I'm also a sibling here at Geek Girl Con, and the first comic I fell in love with was 
uh, the Calvin and Hobbes collections, I would just read that over and over again, um, anywhere in the bathroom or I went to bed. <laughs> Um, something I really fell in love with, just magical for me. Hi, my name is Jen Vaughn. I hope you can hear this for Geek Girl Con. And the first comic I fell in love with was actually a Barbie comic where Barbie and her two friends are models at a science museum and they get their hair done and they just put this gel in it. And Barbie's like, this doesn't look great. And they're like, no, no, just drive in your convertible to the museum. And they do. <laughs> and the wind like whips all their hair in these crazy shapes. And it hardens, so by the time they get to the museum, they're then hanging like all the planets from their actual hair. And I was like, that's insane. And from there, I went on straight to like Lady Beth. Which was inappropriate <laughs> for a 10 year old. The comic that influenced me the most, the comic that I fell in love with, the comic that honestly has haunted me most over the years, is one that I have written about quite a few times actually. Um, in the past, on Comics Bulletin, I did a great piece with my buddy Daniel Elkin about it. It's a book called Omega the Unknown. Now, this, of course, is the more recent reprint of it, but I've had copies of the original Omega since um, I bought them off the newsstand in 1976 when I was 10 years old. The reason that this book kind of haunted me over the years, haunted is the right word, is because it's just so incredibly unique and it's so per perfectly targeted towards embracing the world of a 10 year old. Uh, it involves a boy with a strange psychic connection to an otherworldly superhero who's an odd pastiche of Superman, complete with a, as you can see, red and blue costume, kind of absurdly 70s style. Um, this boy, James Michael, discovers one day um, after a horrific car crash, that his parents are robots. Uh, just like every teen, every child fantasizes, he wasn't made for this world. He was made for another world far away. And his true father is a man with amazing superpowers who fights evil bad guys and uh, often doesn't care what happens when he battles them. Uh, there's just something about the in, the amazing power of the way that writer Steve Gerber came up with this concept, how it was just so perfectly targeted towards embracing um, the mindset of a young child. And the comic um, was truly the first one that I felt deeply, deeply in love with. I still love it to this day. I own many pieces of original artwork, but this page from Omega the Unknown, number two, is my prize comic collection, uh, prize comic item. It costs less than many other items I own, but it's, to me, beautiful.